Hi, this is Steve Stewart, and we're on the fourth part of our our week of uh, tracking through what's called Passion Week or Holy Week, and uh, we're now moving from where we were yesterday uh, to the Garden or the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, this takes place immediately after all that happened in the Upper Room. You know, when I read this section, I've always had this funny, subjective feeling. I feel like impending darkness. And uh, when I picture the scene in my mind, it's, it's like it's shifting from color to black and white. Let's read Luke's account today, Luke 22. Coming out, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling on the ground. This episode in the Garden of Gethsemane, because Matthew gives us the full name of the garden, uh, it's filled with deep significance. It reveals more about the mystery of Christ. You know, the original garden story, going all the way back to the Genesis account, it's like it's being resumed here. When they were, when Adam and Eve were put out of the garden, the garden became a place where they they longed for it, but but it was it was now separation. They couldn't be there, and this led to sorrow and anguish. In the in the Genesis account, the original garden became paradise lost. We are watching the beginning of the process of paradise being regained. So I want to point out just a few things. The first is this this episode is filled with sorrow. Jesus is about to experience the final loneliness uh, of the human condition. But even more, he he knows he's about to enter into this abyss of being confronted with sin and evil. We're witnessing the beginning of Christ emptying himself. I often talk about kenosis, which comes from Philippians 2. He emptied himself, taking on the likeness of a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Sorrow is a key part of this emptying. And Gethsemane was, first of all, a place of sadness and and the sorrow of death. One of the most significant prophetic passages on the Passion is Isaiah 53. In verse 4 says this, written by the way hundreds and hundreds of years before this took place. Isaiah said, A man of sorrows and acquainted with our grief, surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, I love the early church fathers, and uh, St. Ambrose said this about Gethsemane, the one that had no reason to sorrow for himself sorrowed for me. He assumed my sadness in order to confer on me his joy, and in our footsteps he descended even to the sorrow of death in order to recall us to life in his own footsteps. Second thing I want to briefly point out, and we'll go back to it in a minute, is agony. Luke writes, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Something that just jumped out at me. In the garden, Jesus' agony causes the first bloodshed of the whole Passion account. Thirdly, this famous uh, statement, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. 
Jesus was fully human and fully divine. His humanity was not absorbed by his divinity. He experienced the full human experience. You know, his exchange here with the Father teaches us much about prayer. Uh, In Matthew's account, we know three times he goes to the Father with his same thing. If I can, if this cup can pass, please, but not my will, yours be done. You know, in prayer, we hand over ourselves more fully to his desire. This is why prayer is so important, that, that our heart becomes linked to his and absorbed in his. At Gethsemane, Jesus draws our natural will away from opposition to God's will. He restores God's great purpose. We, we, we move from, from our fallenness, which is, is our opposition to, to his purpose, our fear of his purpose, our suspicion of his purpose. And we move in into synergy, synergy with the purpose of God. And this is accomplished just as it is here for Jesus through the sacrifice of obedience. When Jesus says, not my will, but thine be done, we are present with him. This is part of the great mystery. We are present with him within his obedience. Remember Jesus said in John 14, 20, I'm in the Father, you're in me, I'm in you. This is part of the the great mystery of Christ that through his obedience, we now have access to that. We are present with him in that obedience. The next thing and maybe most important that I want to talk about is Gethsemane and the powers that be, the powers of darkness. Again, we reminded, Luke said, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Agonia means to contend, to struggle. It isn't just pain, it's, it's this struggle, this fighting. Jesus at the garden entered into our human condition. And yes, and he felt sorrow and he was feeling weighed down. If the cause of him saying, please let this pass from me, was was fear of his own death, then something's very wrong. Because we know throughout history, many martyrs have faced death without being deeply troubled or sad. But you see, this leads us to the deeper meaning of what is happening in the garden, deeper into the mystery of Christ. Jesus knew that the kingdom was about to break into this present reality. But he also knew that this meant a massive cosmic struggle with the powers of darkness was about to begin. And I think this is the key to understanding the significance of Gethsemane. This is, I think, the deeper significance, part of the deeper mystery. Yes, the garden was about Jesus' total submission to the Father's will. But beyond this... The garden is a battlefield of cosmic eternal implications. At Gethsemane, God is initiating the final confrontation against the powers. The mystery of Christ revealed at Gethsemane is that the judgment of the ruler of this world, that's Satan, and therefore the judgment of This fallen cosmos coincides with the judgment that Jesus takes upon himself in our place. We'll talk about this a little more when we look at the cross. Let me say that again. The judgment that comes on Satan and therefore the judgment of this whole fallen cosmos is a judgment that Jesus takes upon himself in our place. Gethsemane is the beginning of the end. It's been said that Gethsemane is the first day of the age to come. The judgment of the ruler of this world has begun now, and Jesus always knew it would. We're back to the upper room, which we talked about yesterday, but if we look at John's account in John 12, he says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. No, Father, glorify your name. And then he says this, 
Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast down. That was said, who knows, an hour, two, three hours before Gethsemane. And that is what is taking place. What Jesus is feeling is the weight of his awareness. He's about to initiate this decisive battle with the powers that be. Jesus in the garden is preparing to enter this great cosmic final battle as one who will stand alone on the front line in our place. He is standing there. He is, he is about to, to, to win victory. It's called Christus Victor. Win victory over the powers of darkness, over Satan, over sin, over death. He is preparing to enter this great battle and he's going to do it alone and he's going to stand at the front line so all of the pressure, all of, of the, the, the cosmic powers of evil are, are beginning to concentrate upon him. But remember, he is doing it in our place. He is absorbing uh, the, the onslaught, the, the full attack of sin and, and death and Satan. And tomorrow we'll look at the cross and we'll see how this, this continued. God bless you.